So a little while ago, my mother was cleaning out her desk and she found this packet of old photos. It was probably from some disposable camera that either me or my older sister had and we just held on to it for a long time. All of these pictures have some sort of distortion or light leaking on them, including this horrible picture of me. Luckily, not the one of my cat for whatever reason. However, there are a lot of pictures in the set that are complete nonsense. They're either like this half black, half white one, weird static, I have no idea what that even is, or just like kind of fuzzy images that have a lot of discoloration to them. And I figured it might be pretty cool to take one of these images and draw something over top of them. And luckily, Posca pens are the exact utensil to use for that. So we're going to be taking two photos today and we're going to be drawing over top of them. Luckily, they're complete, non um, complete nonsense. I always feel bad when I see like people go to thrift stores and buy photos and then draw on top of them. I know it's a thing and I know it's upcycling art, but I still feel bad. I've been considering doing that myself, but I don't know if I will be. So for the first picture, I decided to take this black and white, weird, fuzzy edged picture and turn it into kind of a landscape. So we have a girl staring off into the sunset. I don't know if this execution of the sun is necessarily the best way I could have done it. However, I didn't want to mess with the orange edge between the black and the white, so I just kind of left it as is. Um, if you do plan on drawing on top of photos with Posca pens or Molotov markers, do be warned that they smear off incredibly easily. And once you put as much pigment on as one wet layer will allow, it just kind of starts smearing. So you have to set the picture aside and come back to it in a bit. Layers will also blend a little bit easier since you can just pick it back up with the pen. But once I got to a good stopping point on the first piece, I set it aside and worked on the second piece, which you can kind of see in the top left corner there. But we're just going to keep continuing on with this piece. I'm kind of lucky that I had enough flesh tone and light tone markers to be able to make this per this girl actually look like a normal human. I don't know what I would have done for skin tone otherwise. And the picking up of the other colors actually kind of helps out for, um, for blending for the shadows. You know how in oil paints you can just mix directly on, on the canvas and it will create smoother gradients. I definitely use that to my advantage for her hair. This tiny black line art pen was absolutely a lifesaver. I don't think I would have been able to make this look anywhere near as good if I didn't have a line art pen. I know most of my Posca art has usually been without, um, without line art and that in, a, in an extent can be pretty cool, but I feel like with human shapes in my style, it's a little harder to get that to look good, you know? So with the first one done, we're gonna be moving over to the second one. I wanted to do a kind of callback to a lot of my cat art that I do. I can put some up on screen here. And my first test of drawing on photos actually was a different cat and I can post that image here. I didn't think to film that first time and I'm really sad because I feel like that would have been a better first impressions piece. But I actually think I like this cat piece a little bit more than that one. I just think it has a lot more character to it. I honestly did absolutely no planning for, for these pieces. I just kind of went in and let it flow more or less. I wish I would have done a little bit more planning spatial space wise. It would have been nice if I could have moved this cat a little bit further down on the image, but I didn't want to block out that weird white I don't know what exactly to call it, distortion. I wanted to make sure that stayed visible. So it kind of restrained where I could put the cat. 
Something I noticed the more that I worked on this cat in particular, the pink Posca was having a really hard time layering over itself. So when I'd go along with the pen, it would just be scraping up the layer below and I'd be getting nowhere and just wasting a whole bunch of ink. So instead I squeezed out a whole lot of paint from the pen and then just used a paintbrush to smooth it out which if you're ever having trouble getting Posca pens to layer is something I've done a lot of times to get the right amount of opaqueness, to get the right opacity uh, without scratching up the layers below. It does waste out a little bit more paint. However, you'd be wasting paint regardless. So I, I see it as kind of like a weird win-lose-win sort of situation. This piece was definitely a lot of back and forth with the opacity of that light pink. It's always the lighter ones, I feel, that have a harder time being more opaque. One thing I'm happiest with about this piece in particular is how well the cat coordinates with its background. The other cat that I did, I blacked out the majority of the background and really only left the static in the eyes. And I feel like that wasn't as good of a use of the original photo as this one was. One thing I do wish I had is better sized white Posca pens. Um, I currently only have white Molotow pens and I feel like they're, they tend to clog a little bit more, especially since I've had those pens for a good few years. I tried to, with that white pen, do a little bit of a callback to that weird white flash that's right below the uh, neck of the cat. And I don't know whether or not it was necessarily the best attempt. It looks kind of like there's like this weird psychic energy now coming off the cat. The one thing I love the most about working on these pictures is the shine you get when you tilt the page, which is why I kept the eye for the cat in this, this static. To get a lot of the little line details, I actually went through with an X-Acto knife and scraped away the top surface of the photo. It kind of disrupts the, the static a little bit more, and at least in my opinion, it draws your eyes up to the head. I don't know whether or not that's necessarily... Um... If you have any spare photos like this sitting around anywhere, I definitely suggest you take a stab at making some some additions to them so long as they're not like valuable family photos or anything i don't i don't endorse defacing family photos with with weird art of love demon cats or anything like that you know but this is the shine that i was talking about you can just see the sparkle in the eye and it's just a very cool effect Thanks so much for watching guys. If you'd feel so inclined, hit that subscribe button and check me out on my other social media handles. Thanks, and I'll see y'all in the next one.